In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Shall see stay
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was lying in the sanctuary of the Lord where the ark of God was, when the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. He answered, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Once again the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. He replied, I did not call you my son. Go back and lie down. Simon had as yet no knowledge of the Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Once again, the Lord called the third time. He got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. Eli then understood that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. And he said to Samuel, Go and lie down. And if someone calls, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood by, calling as he has done before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, and let no word of his fall to the ground. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The body is not meant for fornication. It is for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. God who raised the Lord from the dead will by his power raise us up too. You know surely that your bodies are members 
making up the body of Christ. Anyone who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Keep away from fornication. All the other sins are committed outside the body. But to fornicate is to sin against your own body. Your body, you know, is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you since you received him from God. You are not your own property. You have been bought and paid for. That is why you should use your body for the glory of God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As John stood with two of his disciples, Jesus passed, and John stared hard at him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. Jesus turned round, saw them following, and said, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, which means teacher, where do you live? Come and see, he replied. So they went and saw where he lived and stayed with him the rest of that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of these two who became followers of Jesus after hearing what John had said was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. Early next morning, Andrew met his brother and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Kephas, meaning rock. The Gospel of the Lord. Both the first reading and the gospel this Sunday have as their theme that of vocation or calling. Samuel and the disciples hear the Lord calling to them. But it takes place in a context, and the context for, for both of them is, is quite similar. Samuel, when he hears the voice of the Lord, although he doesn't initially recognize it and has to be helped, is in the Lord's sanctuary by the Ark of God. In other words, in God's presence, close by. And he's sleeping there. It seems that he's very comfortable there. He is at peace in God's presence. He's at home. 
It's the same for the disciples today, those first disciples. They're pointed out by John the Baptist, the last of the prophets. They're pointed to the Lord Jesus, and you can almost see them following at a distance with a little trepidation. Maybe they want the Lord to turn and speak to them, maybe not. When he does, providence has it that he did turn to speak to them. They say, and he asks them, what do you want? They say, where do you live? Maybe it's just the first thing that came into their mind because they were nervous. But whatever circumstances led to that question being asked, providence has it that Jesus said to them, come and see. Come and see where I live, where I'm staying. Come to my house. Be at home with me. We're told they stayed with him the rest of that day. So just like Samuel, they were in God's presence home with him, comfortable with him. That is the natural place to hear the Lord calling to us, giving us our vocation or revealing it to us. Each one of us is called to be at home with the Lord, to be his friend, in other words, to allow him to know us and love us and to know him and love him in return. Our friendship with the Lord is to be natural, the most natural thing in the world, someone we can trust, turn to, who is with us all the time. Each of us has our vocation. The church lists a few, the priesthood and diaconate, holy orders, in other words, the religious life, and the married life. There is also, of course, the single life. And then there are many ways which aren't strictly speaking vocations in the strictest sense of the word, but are certainly callings, ways of serving God. Any profession, family life, voluntary work, a life of prayer, even in our own homes, all these ways are ways of serving God, fulfilling our calling, our vocation. Some of us know our vocation well. If we find ourselves married, then our vocation is obviously marriage. Those of us in holy orders, it, it's clear. But each day we are called to say yes again to the Lord, to serve him in the circumstances of that day in smaller ways. For some, their vocation perhaps is not yet quite so clear, and that's fine. St. John Henry Newman, whose image is over there in the Martyr's Chapel, said these beautiful words, the Lord has created me to do him some definite service, but I may never know it in this life, but it will be revealed to me. All we know is that if we remain close to the Lord, try to serve him, to do his will, to do what pleases him, each day, each moment, we can leave the rest to him. At the end of our life, we will see clearly how we have served him. That doesn't, however, excuse us from discernment, from trying to work out what it is the Lord is asking us to do. So today, perhaps, as we hear these readings, we resolve to stay close to the Lord, to become his friend, to be at peace in his presence, and to say yes to his will, we pray especially for those discerning their vocations, be that to the priesthood, be that to the religious life, be that to the married life. We pray for all those discerning in what way they are to serve the Lord. Our vocation is this, I would say, the specific way in which each of us is called to bring other people to the Lord Jesus. One character who comes up in the gospel is Andrew, who leads his brother Simon, Peter, to the Lord. A critical moment because, of course, Peter is the first pope. That's a characteristic of Andrew in the gospels, bringing other people to the Lord Jesus. That is what we're called to do. Our vocation, holy orders, religious life, married life, 
whatever it may be, is to bring other people to the Lord Jesus. It's the specific way in which we're called to do it. So we resolve today to stay close to the Lord so that we can hear his voice and receive his strength to fulfill our calling. And we pray for all those who are discerning their calling in how to serve the Lord, that they may have the courage to say yes and to place all their trust in him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, called to follow the Lamb of God, let us implore the mercy of our Heavenly Father for the needs of the church and the world. For the church, that guided and strengthened by the Holy Spirit, she may, by her preaching and teaching, draw all peoples to a life of faith as disciples of the Lamb of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a swift end to the current pandemic, for those suffering its effects, both directly and indirectly, for those working to bring it to an end, and for goodwill and cooperation from all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace, that on this Peace Sunday, the leaders of nations and all people may be open to the gift of healing brought by the Holy Spirit and work to promote just peace in all corners of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering and ill at this time, may they be strengthened by the love and compassion of their brothers and sisters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, that they may rejoice to have a share in the resurrection of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Let us ask Our Lady, Mother of unfailing help, to join her prayer with ours. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, fill your people anew with the gift of the Holy Spirit, that they may continue to seek out and follow your beloved Son, and by their way of life bring others to him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, 
Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Saviour. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that, bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, May this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. 
And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis our Pope, Marcus our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. the blood of Christ. If you are receiving Holy Communion, please do remember to remove your mask as we approach and then to present your hands flat like this. Thank you.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. As always, the weekly bulletin is available to view on the parish website with details of, of what's happening in the week ahead, so do please have a look at it. Um, a notice principally for those who are joining this Mass through live streaming. From tomorrow, the project of live streaming Mass in the diocese is being extended so that the daily Mass from the cathedral will no longer be every day, but other parishes in the diocese will be streaming their daily Mass, and details of how to join these celebrations um, are available on the Diocese of Leeds website from tomorrow. But the Sunday 11 a.m. Mass will, for the foreseeable future, continue to be live streamed on the Leeds Cathedral YouTube channel. So that's from the weekdays from tomorrow. Other parishes in the diocese will be live streaming. But the Sunday 11 o'clock Mass will continue to be streamed on the Leeds Cathedral YouTube channel. The normal offertory collection will be taken as you leave the cathedral today, and please do as always follow the indications of the stewards as we leave by this side aisle. Thank you all, and I wish you all a good week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.